distinguished representative of Ukraine. Mr. Chairman, Ukraine aligns itself with the statement of the European Union delivered on October 14, 2016. We welcome the report of the Secretary General on the item 53 of the agenda, as well as the report of the Committee on Information. These two documents contain valuable recommendations on measures needed to strengthen public information and communications capacity of the UN. In particular, my delegation strongly endorses calls to improve multilingualism and develop effective social media strategy to keep up with the latest trends in global information and facilitate work with various audiences, including young people. Ukraine welcomes the update of the UN website, which is an important web source for the public. At the same time, we noted that some websites of UN committees, peacekeeping missions and subsidiary bodies remain out of date and should be modernized. The UN news centers and UN radio are seen as reliable information sources in Ukraine. We encourage UN news staff to continue to focus more on analysis and interviews with UN officials. Mr. Chairman, Ukraine believes that free, independent, and pluralistic information sources are essential for development of a democratic society. The free flow of information is also critical for building and improving relations among the nations. However, as we can observe, not all follow this line. Unfortunately, some governments continue to build state-sponsored information campaigns to be used to bring chaos to other nations. For these governments, the disinformation and massive propaganda have become a daily tool to brainwash their citizens in an attempt to justify their policies. Mr. Chairman, since the beginning of illegal occupation of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea by Russia in 2014, journalists have been regular targets for attacks. They have been detained and beaten, deprived of their jobs, and expelled from their native land. The recent case of Ukrainian journalist Mykola Semena, who faces charges in, in Ukrainian Crimea for alleged making calls to separatism and undermining so-called Russia's sovereignty of the Ukrainian peninsula. After occupation of Crimea, the Russian Federation cut off all Ukrainian TV channels and news agencies there and waged repressions against those who stood up against Russian occupation. Russia has forcibly silenced the only Crimean Tatar TV channel in Crimea called ATR, the staff of which was forced to flee the peninsula in order not to be killed, abducted or arrested. Mr. Chairman, Regrettably, but the same methods are being used in the certain areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions of Ukraine, where Russia and its proxies keep waging military aggression against Ukrainian citizens. All independent media were forced to close and leave the conflict-affected zones, while those temporary out of Ukraine's controlled territories have been subjected to forceful Russian state propaganda, inciting hatred, and violence to justify Russia's aggression against Ukraine. We strongly condemn such actions, which contravene fundamental norms and principles of the international law, and the top of which is the freedom of speech and expression. It is evident that Russia uses state media and propaganda as a hybrid war instrument against Ukraine. One of the recent examples of Russia's cynical campaign against independent media is ungrounded detention of the Ukrainian citizen and journalist Roman Sushenko, who was arrested in Moscow on September 30, 2016, under baseless accusations. Roman Sushenko is an independent defender of the freedom of speech, known for his exposure of Russia's illegal actions against my country. His numerous articles and reporting are readily available in public domain. We call on the international community to react to this unacceptable case of persecution of the Ukrainian journalist in Russia and use all available instruments to facilitate his immediate release. Mr. Chairman, it has become clear that such hybrid war against Ukraine involving state control media is a direct threat to the United Nations values. The committee and other United Nations bodies should rapidly react to all such attempts to falsify information and use it as a tool for fueling regional conflicts. My government continues to believe 
that the international community should seriously consider drafting an international legal instrument prohibiting international propaganda with a view to protecting societies from state-led information wars. We are convinced that information security is a key element in every national security system and the United Nations should become a beacon for it by identifying and holding to account those who engage in Cold War practices. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative of Ukraine for his statement.